Hi guys, I'm here with Katie Morton. Hi. Um, you may have seen her on my videos before. I think I've had her on uh, at least three times before. Mm -hmm. And um, we actually share uh, a certain percentage of subscriber base. Uh, so many of you know her too. Um, Katie is here because uh, I have some questions to ask her. Some questions that I am not able to answer uh, about extreme fantasizing um, or maladaptive daydreaming. Uh, first question, which is what kinds of therapy help? And there are, um, there are many things we can do to get better, um, more so than just therapy, but the best thing that they actually recommend is just talk therapy, which is, is really nice because you can get that anywhere. It's not like you have to have someone who specializes in a particular type of thing. They think just talking out your uh, past traumas or past abuse or whatever it is that maybe led to the dissociation talking it out in general, they find to be the most helpful and you're able to heal and then the needs go away. Um, you know, they also talk about um, CBT and um, that because CBT kind of works on how, where our thoughts are coming from and what we believe about that and what we do as a result when we're kind of finding, it's, it's the same thing as like what we're talking about. You're tracking back to what the cause is you're healing the cause, so then our reaction to it isn't there anymore, if that makes sense. So talk therapy and CBT are the best. Okay. So talk therapy, CBT, therapy. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, second question. Is there someone, something someone can do to help themselves without the use of therapy? Yes, there's a bunch of different things. Depending on what, um, what you think your core is, issue is or the trauma like we're talking about a lot of people it's a sexual abuse or a physical abuse or some kind of uh, traumatic event in their life if you know what that is or you have a suspicion of what causes it there are great workbooks out there something that um, I forgot to mention in our first video is if sexual abuse is something that's happened to you I always recommend on my videos the courage to heal workbook and it's something they recommend you do with a therapist but you can do it on your own so if you find helpful workbooks and books um, if that's the way that you help yourself in the way that you learn best. Um, you can definitely utilize that. Also journaling that people can find really cathartic. It's great to get it out and to express what's going on. Um, and also there are even some online groups you can join. Um, a lot of people get on like, uh, I know that even on my website, there's a bunch of chat rooms you can get into talk just to find other people who struggle with what you struggle with. That much. No, exactly. And another thing that you can also, um, that I always have my clients do in general, even if they're seeing me regularly, is having a nice supportive group of friends. Um, that can really help too. You kind of create your own support system so you have people to vent to, to talk to, to like process through. Um, that can really help as well. Okay. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's hard though to talk to friends about this issue because it's so yeah. hidden. Yeah. But like once, once, once they know and you, like, you see the reaction, you know, it's not so bad, then you know, like, it's not so hard to like get into it. Exactly. But sometimes you might be surprised. Maybe they might deal with a similar issue. You never know. Like, yeah. And something everyone can kind of relate to is when we kind of like daydreaming in general or spacing out. People will call it like, oh, I just spaced out. Like, I will even if I've had a really long day at work, like getting home, I'll be like, how do I get home? You know, like I know I drove and I know. But I, it's like, it's just an ingrained thing. You don't think about it, so you, like, go somewhere else to space out. And people mm -hmm. always, I find, when I'm explaining to parents and stuff, they can always relate to that. And then just kind of telling them it's like taking it a step further, you know? I don't know if that helps. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have any suggestions that aren't covered in my questions? Um, yeah, there's one thing that can be really great and. I have quite a few um, clients who this has really helped with a lot of parts of their recovery, whatever it is they're struggling with, um, is like having um, a really creative art therapy. And I can recommend some things as a therapist, but I don't specialize in art therapy. And there are people who specialize in actual art therapy, but these can be anything from um, writing poetry to dance to um, sculpture, painting, anything kind of to help you express. Um, making collages. I'll do all sorts of things with my clients because sometimes what we're talking about being the core issue is um, oftentimes something that's really traumatic. So it's really hard for us to talk about it at first. 
And some for some people, especially if you've been in the art world and you find that really is um, helps you, it can be a great way to express it when we don't have the words to express it, if that makes sense. So that's another option for those of you who don't really like talk therapy and you're like, I can't talk about this, you know, that'd be a great way to kind of, I guess, start. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. So now some non how to recover questions. <laughs> Um, how often do you find a patient who will talk about this form of dissociation? Not very often. I've actually only had one myself, um, a client when I was in the inpatient eating disorder clinic that I worked at, I had one client who struggled with this, um, but it took her a long time to talk about it. She didn't even know how to express what it was. She's kind of embarrassed. Um, but the more people talk about it, at least in my experience, especially with people who self-harm and have eating disorders, there's a high prevalence of it. People just don't talk about it. Yeah. It is, uh, when I talked to my therapist about it, I was incredibly, incredibly embarrassed. Like, I think I was, like, choking up, and, like, I didn't want to admit much about it at all. Like, I didn't want to tell her. I, like, I just said like, that I, I, I mentioned it briefly, and she asked me some questions, and I said, I don't want to answer that. I don't want to answer that. I don't want to answer that. And I was like... I, just the fact that I admitted it at all was like astounding. Yeah. And like, uh, I think that you know some other people that you'd seen might have actually had the issue and just not said it. Like, uh, so, but it is like not that common of a of an issue. Seriously. No. Yeah, and I mean, I think like a lot of things, there's just not since people don't talk about it because we get embarrassed. There's not a lot of information. Therefore, there's not a lot of research. Therefore, you know, it kind of compounds on itself. And if we make videos. And we help spread awareness. Also, um, sort of theory slash question. Also, <laughs> um, because uh, starting off, um, since you know, extreme fantasizing, uh, well, maladaptive daydreaming, is a form of dissociation. Mm -hmm. And uh, in essence, you're kind of uh, imagining yourself so like deeply into the life of someone else, mm -hmm. um, as another person in your mind. Um, and DID, and for those, dissociative identity disorder, for those of you uh, watching who don't know what that is, it used to be known as multiple personality disorder. Um, and that is pretty much, uh, you end up um, imagining yourself so deeply into the mind of someone else, and into, uh, as, as someone else, that you end up becoming someone else, like having alternate people in your mind. Um, so um, my question was, um, is that I'm curious as to whether extreme fantasizing um, maladaptive daydreaming is a mild form, like you know, on on the spectrum um, of DID, of dissociative identity disorder, and possibly where DID stems from, and where the disorder starts. Yeah, um, you're definitely correct. It is a mild form of um, DID, and if any of you have more questions about DID, you can always you know send them my way. But um, it is what they used to call multiple uh, multiple personality disorder. Um, but DID is something that usually when I'm going to diagnose someone with it, it's something that has started when they're really young. It usually is in their developmental years. And I think they say developmental years because like we were talking about earlier, it's usually a traumatic event has happened and that happens when we're younger or it may repeatedly happen. And so we'll start dissociating as a way to cope with that and it will build over time. And so when it started when we're young and that's our main coping skill, just like an eating disorder or self-harm, we start maybe doing it more and more and more and more. And when we be, get stressed out or when things in life change, we are doing it more. And so it becomes it, automatic because the it, brain, like after some point, you do it so many, like a certain amount of times, it's just kind of like, what did I hear? Like something with the left, right brain to the left brain, it just comes, yep. click, right, you just, do it right away. It's quick. Exactly. It's almost yeah. like a uh, instinct. You know, there's yeah. no thought behind it. And so at that point, when someone's using, um, dissociation as a, a coping mechanism all the time. Like you were saying, you wouldn't even know you were doing it as often as you were. And then you'd be like, Oh, I was in it for how many hours or whatever. Um, that's when we would diagnose someone with DID when they're doing it like all the time. And you and can't stop. You like say, stop, 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 stop. Like you, you say like, this is the last time I cannot do this anymore. Just stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. You can't stop. Yeah. So <clears throat> exactly. And so it, it runs on a, a continuum like we talked about before. And so it kind of depends on how much time you're spending in it. And if you're spending a majority, I believe it's like 
I think the term is majority or more than a certain percentage of your time in the dissociative realm, whether it's your, your daydream or you find yourself just like completely spacing out. I have clients who don't go anywhere. They feel like they just like remove themselves from their body. Um, if you're spending all of your time in, in that, then that would be um, DID. And then just back to the other side of the continuum would be someone like on their way home. Um, like I was saying, for me, like maybe not remembering how you got home, you're like spaced out. That was, that was the, my last question. Okay. And uh, like I said, I'm going to link Katie's channel. Uh, she, may, she, she had started off making a lot of videos about uh, eating disorders and moved on to self-harm. And she, now she, she's pretty much blossomed in a whole tree of you know, areas of uh, mental health. Mm -hmm. And um, so now she's, she's about to post on, on dissociation. And uh, so you can find her channel in, in the description. And um, you know you you have um, Tumblr and a few other places people can ask you questions. Pretty much and, uh Make videos in the week, mm -hmm. uh, answering those questions. Yeah, I have uh, Tumblr all Tuesday. There's so many, but yeah. Uh -huh. Anyway, so you can find Katie. Um, and thank you so much for answering these questions. I had so many people wanting to know how to how to get better from this, and yeah, I could of really. Thanks. Couldn't really for asking me. Answer. So, thank you. Yeah, happy to help.